Yay, that's a wonderful way to start our service. So Merry Christmas to you all and welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church on this Christmas Day. It's a wonderful time to celebrate and I'm glad uh, you could be here. And for those worshiping at home, uh, we're glad that you can be with us as well as we celebrate uh, today, like I said, is, uh, is Christmas Day. It's the day we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you can tell, today is just a very casual uh, time that we get together, uh, whether we are here or at home. And so uh, as we prepare for this time, yeah, as we prepare for this time, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Lord, we give you thanks for this time in which we are able to celebrate the birth of your child. And we celebrate the good news that it brings. And all this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning we're going to sing a couple of songs up front, some uh, of our favorite uh, Christmas uh, songs that tell the good news. The first one that we're going to sing is Joy to the World on page 246. It's also on the screen. And so uh, I'm going to invite us to stand and sing Joy to the World. next song we're going to sing is Good Christian Friends Rejoice. It is on page 224 in our hymnal and on the screen as well. Let us sing. seated. Our scripture this morning continues 
the Christmas story that we heard proclaimed last night. And it begins when it says, When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in all of, for all of your people, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles, and a glory to your people of Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was b- being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising and the many of Israel. Yeah, and the sign will be that, and a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after marriage. Then, as a widow to the age of eighty-four, she never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who are looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. We give thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So today is an interesting phenomenon. It is the first time since 2016 that we have had Christmas on Sunday. And it, you know, presents an interesting challenge for a lot of churches because we just celebrated Christmas Eve last night with a lot of wonderful services. And now there's a dilemma that, a dilemma that even the New York Times had written about of what do churches do? Do they have a service on Sunday or do they cancel? And this is a a tough dilemma that a lot of churches have to face because why would they cancel? Well, because not a lot of people are going to show up. It's a busy time, a time with family, a time with friends. And so we have to decide, are we coming or are we worshiping? What are we doing on Christmas Day? The, The service or the New York Times talked about it. And when they said that, they talked about a a New York. Do you want to go? You want to go? And so when they talked about this on the, on the, uh, in the New York Times, what they said was uh, that there was this uh, divide, this idea that like in a couple, you know, a couple of weeks or for four or so weeks, we've been hearing this war on Christmas. We've been hearing about the true reason for the season. And then we have to decide we're going to cancel and it doesn't have the same ring. You know, it, it doesn't kind of fit the message that we've had over the past year or the past year. Now, I say this not to bring shame to any churches that did decide to cancel. It's a hard decision. Uh, Or to bring shame for people that have gone or traveling or anything like that. It's not a a guilt trip. I I understand with my family, you've seen them already up here, some of them up here with us. Uh, This is a a busy day for us as well. We, We enjoyed coming down early in the morning seeing what Santa brought us. We've enjoyed opening our presents. Some of them are already here with us uh, in, the, in the pews, and uh, they're enjoying some of those presents now. But it's an exciting day for us, too. But even with that, it was, 
important for us as well to, to worship, to celebrate. And if we wonder why it was important for me, I, I have to think to just this nativity here itself and why, why that's uh, such a, an amazing scene. And maybe some of the, the kids, so I see some of them here and one over there. Maybe you can help me out. Who are some of the figures that we have in the nativity scene? Yeah. You have Mary. Yeah, so we'll start with Mary. So Mary is a young woman at the time, and she's scared and, uh, you know, afraid of everything that's going on. She's about to have a baby, and she is at the nativity scene. That's great. Who else? Baby Jesus. Yeah, so baby Jesus is there. He's the central figure that everybody's coming to see. Who is out? Joseph, the dad, so he's a carpenter. He's kind of like the ultimate blue, uh, blue-collar guy. He works with his hands. He does all the, the hard work, and he makes a living for his family. Who else? The shepherds. So we might not know this, but the shepherds, they're not really liked a lot of times in Israel. People didn't really care for the shepherds. They would walk across people's lands a lot of times as they're grazing, They were looked down upon. I mean, King David was a shepherd, but at the same time, he wasn't supposed to be king. He was a shepherd because he was the youngest kid. So they kind of just gave him one of the worst jobs. And so the shepherds are there. And then we have one more set that it comes a little later in the the story, but who else visits the nativity? The wise men. So the wise men are a group of people from a foreign country. So uh, Persia, uh, Babylon area, they come. They're not even of the same religion that Jesus was, but they look at a star and they say, hey, this is a sign of a king that has been born, and they come. All these different people come to the nativity scene, and they're all there with their own background. They're all there with whatever hopes and dreams and baggage that they have to come and celebrate Jesus. And I think that's part of the cool story of Christmas is this Jesus, this Son of God, draws everybody from wherever they are, all the different backgrounds that they have to come and celebrate. And it continues with what we read today. It continues with the story when they come and dedicate the kids, or uh, dedicate Jesus at the temple. They dedicate him, and all of a sudden there's two older people there. There's uh, Simeon and Anna. Anna's a widow, and you know they've lived their whole life expecting and hoping for a Messiah. And they come and they see Jesus, and it just brings them such great joy. So much so that Simeon hears it, and Simeon says, Lord, you can dismiss your servant in peace. He's so happy. He says, like, I can die now happy because I've seen Jesus. Jesus does this for so many of us. In his ministry, he keeps doing this. When he's 12 years old, he gathers the teachers in the synagogue with him. He gathers his disciples who are fishermen and tax collectors and zealots. He gathers women and children at his feet. He goes and he brings Pharisees to to come and hear from him. He heals the the sick. He he heals the untouchables. He heals those who are both Jewish and not. He brings everybody to come and to know that they are welcome at the, the nativity. You know, that's part of the good news of the Christmas story, like I shared last night in our Christmas Eve services, is we're reminded of how much God loves us. That God loves us so much that it can bring all of us, whoever we may be, together. And so that's why it's important for me to worship today. Because it gathers us together, whether we're here, whether we're online, wherever we may be, in in a time of celebration, in a time of praise, able to bring our own backgrounds, our own history, our own baggage, if we will, It allows us to come and gather with our own diversity, whether we are from here or from not, whether we are young or old. It doesn't matter what race we are. It doesn't matter how much we have in our checking account. All of those things don't matter because we are all invited to come and to experience the love of Jesus Christ at the manger. 
That's why it's important for me to celebrate today. And I hope it's important for you as well as we experience the joy of all of those other things. Like I said, I love all those other things, but it puts into perspective the joy that we experience. In a second, we're going to experience that joy that gathers us together, a joy around the table that reminds us that however unique and diverse we are, we become one in the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And then after this service, for those who would like, We have opportunities to serve and to be reminded of those who can't be here today, those who might uh, need to experience that love of Jesus Christ. We have a couple of opportunities uh, to help uh, those and to to send that love out into the world. And so I'll talk about that in just a moment. But at this time, we're going to transition into this time of communion in which we are gathered together. So I invite you to, to hear an invitation that Christ gives to us that Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole church, but we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As the people who have experienced the peace of Christ, way of Christ on this Christmas. I invite you to offer it to one another. If you're worshiping with us online, you can offer it to each other through the comment sections and peace of Christ be with you, but let us pass the peace with one another. Now, as a forgiven and reconciled people, I invite us to offer ourselves and our gifts to God. I invite our, our special off, our, our ushers to come forward uh, as we give of our offering. And so, uh, my special o- usher. Thank you.
God, we give you thanks for the gift that is your son, Jesus Christ. And we offer these gifts to you to take them and share with this community and this world the good news that your son is born. And this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to join with me in what we call the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always by the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of children, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there's one bread, we are reminded that whoever we are, wherever we come from, we are all drawn to the one grace of Jesus Christ. The one cup reminds us of that very same good news. The table is ready. This is not my table. It's not the United Methodist Church's table. It's the Lord's table. All are invited to come and experience his grace and welcome at the table. We'll do it by a means called intinction. All that simply means is I'll hand you a piece of bread and you can take it and dip it into the cup. We'll also have a gluten-free option that'll be out here on uh, this uh, on the front. And over here by the tree, there are also prepackaged elements. If that is something uh, that makes you feel more comfortable during this season, those will be over by the tree as well. 
and I have a communion assistant uh, that will come and help at this time. We'll begin with this side over here and then just uh, come as you feel led. But if Christ given for you, but if. our benediction just the announcement again that we have an opportunity for anybody that would like to to participate in a, a quick uh, time of mission to serve our community on this Christmas day we recognize we re have received the greatest gift and so we want to continue to give uh, for those here in person the two opportunities we have is uh, last night we received a lot of the uh, items from the reverse advent uh, calendar the items for our food pantry and so we'll have an opportunity that we can take them over to our fan, uh, food pantry start the process of cataloging it bringing it in the other opportunity that we have is we have some cookies uh, some already pre-made uh, decorated some that we can decorate ourselves we're going to sort them out um, we have places like our uh, round hill fire department the sheriff's office and some others people that have to work today on christmas that we're going to take them to to help be able to celebrate with if you're at home, you can do the same thing. Uh, you can uh, make things for those who have to work today. Or another great idea for uh, service is to write cards to some of our shut-ins, uh, to write cards to those who are serving in the military that aren't able to be home today. These are great ways uh, to be able to serve today as well. And so we're going to enter into that time of service and praise, but I invite you, just like we heard in our last song, to go tell it on the mountain, that good news that Jesus Christ is born. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 